Special Intelligence Unit bans withdrawal from public accounts. Plus, search operations continue at Osamanaji to recover the bodies of Rice family. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on MTA Network News. I'm Cyril Stober in Abuja. Hengino John Adams joins me from Lagos. And you can follow this news live on our website, nt.ng slash live, nt news now, and other social media platforms displayed on the screen. Deputy President of the Senate, Ovi Omagege, has identified the Local Government Autonomy Bill as the biggest challenge to the ongoing review of the 1999 Constitution. Senator Omagege stated this while briefing State House correspondence after an audience with President Muhammad Buhari at the presidential villa. He dismissed criticisms about the constitutional review process being an exercise in futility. He, however, blamed State Houses of Assembly for failing to vote on the amendment bills, especially when local government autonomy transmitted to them for concurrence. It matters to us, which is a priority to us, which is a big priority of Mr. President. You know, it's the issue of the local government autonomy. And that's why we're having challenges. And I would have expected that uh, the, the, the state houses uh, would show some independence, you know, in, in uh, uh, making some of the decisions. But it does appear that, you know, and I can't fault them, you know, for working with the state governors, you know, in taking uh, these positions. But we believe that with time, uh, we'll be able to resolve this. The President of the Senate has reached out uh, uh, to some of the governors. Uh, so I'm confident we're working. My, my brother, my colleague in the House, the Deputy Speaker, is also reaching out. Uh, we're confident that uh, in no time uh, we should be able to get uh, the requisite number. Uh, I pray for the local government autonomy. But uh, like I said, that is not the only uh, uh, bill. Uh, actually, we transmitted 44 bills, if I'm right, 44 bills. But these two appears to be uh, the most critical uh, to a lot of uh, stakeholders. So please, uh, don't, don't rush to judgment by labeling this exercise uh, uh, an exercise uh, in uh, uh, futility. The Deputy Senate President also briefed the Nigerian leader on his ongoing electionary campaign for the governorship of Delta State on the platform of the APC. The, the message we are saying to our people is resonating. Uh, we've been able to make the case to them that uh, Delta State uh, is supposedly a very, very rich state, and indeed we are a rich state. By our reckoning, uh, since uh, the Okowa administration came into being, uh, Delta State has received close to about 4.2 trillion naira. And this came, like I said, by way of federal allocation. Uh, it came by way of 13% derivation, uh, and also uh, about 400 billion naira that uh, the state uh, uh, has borrowed. And uh, only recently, uh, thanks to uh, my brother, the governor of uh, 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 River State, we also made to understand that uh, uh, another 260 billion naira was given to uh, uh, our state. Uh, there's nothing on ground by way of infrastructural development that is commensurate with uh, all of these uh, receipts that uh, come to the state. The federal government has reiterated commitment to ending oil theft and illegal refining activities in the Niger Delta while commending the gallant efforts and gains made by Operation Delta Safe against oil bunkering. This was contained in a message by President Muhammad Buhari, delivered by the Minister of State Petroleum, Timmy Pre Silva, during a visit to troops of the Joint Task Force South-South Operation Delta Safe. Chinyere Okoli was there in our reports. We had the chance to the Honorable Minister, the State of Petroleum. Hip, hip, hip. On arrival at the 3rd Battalion Nigerian Army in a firm Delta State, the minister first inspected the gas of honor before addressing the troop. 
Delivering President Buhari's message, he commended the troops for their resilience, bravery and sacrifice in the face of daunting challenges, assuring that the fight against crude oil theft, which has caused the country loss of revenue and environmental degradation in the Niger Delta region, will soon be a thing of the past. The very agile men of the armed forces that I see before me, there should be no reason why we will be losing a very essential commodity that is at the core of the national economy. We must work together as we have done in the past few months to ensure that we achieve 100% at the Nigerian Navy ship Delta, the minister inspected some facilities, including impounded vessels used by militants in nefarious activities. He thanked officers and men of Operation Delta Safe for their continued determination to deal with the situation. The minister was accompanied on the visit by Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, the GMD, NFPCL, Malam Melekiare, and other top military officials. In a firm in Delta State, I'm Chinere Okoli. NTA News. NNPC Limited says its attention has been drawn to an online publication alleging that the company exported 17.8 million barrels of crude oil without proper documentation between 2016 and 2020. A statement signed by the Chief Corporate Communications Officer, Garbadin Mohammed, notes that the Auditor General's report in reference did mention 32 oil marketing companies involved in the non-completion of the NXP forms, but that does not imply that the proceeds from the sale were not repatriated into the coffers of NNPC and consequently into the Federation account. The statement also states that NNPC does not appoint inspection agents as alleged, but that is the sole responsibility of the Federal Ministry of Finance. NNPC is therefore urging the public to disregard the said malicious publication and visit the relevant Audit General's website to see the full content of the audit report. The coordinator of Presidential Amnesty Program, Major General Barry Tarie Njomo, is suggesting that ex-agitators should be engaged in the protection of pipelines in the Niger Delta. He stated this while giving an update on steps taken to reposition the program, including efforts to secure employment for graduates of the scheme. Mayor Ugidi reports. A new ambience, a new man at the Presidential Amnesty Office, Abuja. Major General Barry Tari Indiomo, wearing the look that depicts his readiness for the job. Just four months old, but reaching out to many for partnership to give the amnesty program the reforms it deserves. From NIDDA, security chiefs, traditional rulers, ex agitators, to the head of the civil service of the Federation. Today, meeting with a journalist, he was emphatic. Billions of Naira going into tuition fees for beneficiaries of the scheme. He admitted that is not sustainable, so there is need for auditing. But for students that have successfully graduated, there is great hope. I have gone around visiting quite a number of government agencies, ministers, to try to see how we can secure employment for these boys. In terms of entrepreneurship, we have a number of initiatives. We have come with the concept of train, employ, and exit. Because this program is not intended to last forever. Crude oil theft, a major challenge to the economy, and the Office of the Presidential Amnesty Program is willing to be part of the clampdown on the criminals. I believe that the ex-agitators should be given the opportunity to be involved in the protection and surveillance of oil pipelines within the Niger Delta. Um, uh, it is something they have also discussed with me, uh, and I believe that it will also be 
uh, a way of testing their faith and commitment. Thumbs up from the coordinator to President Muhammad Obuari for prompt approval for the monthly allowances to ex-agitators and a lot of reforms in the offing with the signing of the 2023 budget, General Barry promised. Mayor Ogede, NTNs. Former Pope Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth has been laid to rest at the Vatican Grotto's house in the tombs of several popes. Justin Ben Uy reports that Pope Francis presided over the funeral service held at St. Peter's Square, Vatican City. An estimated 100,000 Catholics converged on St. Peter's Square for the funeral of the former Pope Benedict XVI. Benedict died on Saturday, aged 95 almost a decade after becoming the first pope in 600 years to resign. He now also becomes the first former pontiff in the modern history of the Catholic Church to be buried by an incumbent pope, Francis, who arrived outside St. Peter's Basilica in a wheelchair on Thursday. Francis, who suffers knee pain, thanked his predecessor for the knowledge and dedication he bestowed to his papacy. Benedict led the Catholic Church for eight years before resigning in 2013, citing a decline in his health. He chose to be called Pope Emeritus after his abdication, instead of reverting to Joseph Ratzinger and continued to live in the Vatican and to wear a white cassock. Cardinals and clergy from around the world attended the funeral, as did the heads of state and prime ministers of Italy and Benedict's native Germany. Other national leaders and royals attended in private capacities. Benedict was given a funeral similar to that of a reigning pontiff. Benedict will be buried in a vast underground graveyard or crypt beneath the basilica known as the Vatican Grottoes, which houses the tombs of several popes. Meanwhile, after the ceremony, Benedict's remains, carried in a separate coffin, will be placed inside a zinc one and then finally into another made from oak. He will then be laid to rest in the tomb where Pope John Paul II was buried before beatification. He will be buried with coins and medals minted during his time as Pope, the palliums he wore as part of his robes and a metal cylinder containing a rogito, a text describing his papacy. Justin Bamuni, NTN News. Meanwhile, special prayers were held in Abuja for late Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, where Archbishop Ignatius Kaigama called on leaders to exhibit selfless leadership as exemplified by the late pontiff. Kenneth Nanu reports. Christians, irrespective of denomination, converged on the Catholic Pro Cathedral to pray for the repose of late Pope Emeritus. Benedict the Sixteen. Receive him into kingdom of light and peace. We pray, O Lord. Celebrating the life and times of the late Pontiff Emeritus, Catholic Archbishop of Abuja Diocese, Most Reverend Ignatius Kaigama, explains that Christians are comforted by the legacies of the late Pope. <laughs> He catechized, that means he taught people about Jesus Christ in a very clear and eloquent manner. It takes great courage and phenomenal humility to be able to say, I renounce the position of the Pope. But he did that. And that tells us that when we know we are unable to fulfill the duties of a particular office, we should humbly 
and graciously say we cannot do it let somebody else take over so this is a powerful example to our political leaders president muhammad buhari in his message through the minister of women affairs paid tribute to the late pontiff mr president mourned with the church with all christians around the world and mr president urge all of us to remember to live holy lives and emulate the lifestyle of the late pope incidentally the representative of a purple knight like many others have sweet memories of the deceased pope represented peace and love and he loved god with all his heart when he wrote he wrote from his heart and he asks us to keep our faith and to keep our faith strong until the end the rocking mass was held simultaneously with funeral service at st peter square rome in abuja kenneth nanim nta news i will take a break now the news continues shortly I, Senator Aisha Dahir Ahmed Binani, have to welcome His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, Commander in Chief of the Army Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to Yola on Monday night, January 2023, for the flag of ceremony of my governorship campaign on the platform of our great party, the All Progressives Congress APC. Your Excellency, Adana is your second home. You are always welcome. Nigerian women are highly elated with such an honor in supporting the campaign to elect a female governor for the first time in the history of Nigeria's democratic governance. Your tenure is playing another first. As you come to Yola, we welcome you with all our soul and heart. Announcer, Senator Aisha Dahiru Ahmed Binani, a Damawa State APC governorship candidate. Be me, brother Sagi. I get mega talent. The one where I don't show and I'm small, say. If you mega pa, now why you blow mega data plant? Because nobody they do mega streaming like you. Oh yeah, make a show now another level. Let's go. People of Nigeria don't talk up them saying as you are to who they want. As president of Nigeria, our country people get many reasons will make them all agree. Say now nah, Ashiwa do Bonatini with them choose for this president election. Yes, so Bonatini go na man be sapi. Anything we put in hand, he dey work well. He do better work for Lagos State when he be governor. Till today, Lagos people see they enjoy from all the better better things we have done for Lagos people of Nigeria. He go to make we vote for who sapi. Yes, it can't be so. Make we all come out for election day and vote for our Ahmed Tinubu as president of Nigeria. Vote to send it up. Kashim Shetima as a President, what APC the party with the broom? Who did the president with a ball? The National Pension Commission PENCOM is pleased to think from all its stakeholders, particularly retirees of Treasury funded ministries, departments, and agencies who retired in the year 2022, that the federal government has released the sum of 13.89 billion naira for the payment of their accrued pension rights. The accrued pension rights represent an employee's benefit for the past years of service up to June 2004 when the CPS came into effect. Accordingly, PENCOM is processing remittances into the various retirement savings accounts of the affected retirees and their pension fund administrators will notify them in due course. Finally, Pencom appreciates the efforts of His Excellency, Mr. President, for his untiring support and commitment to the implementation of the CPS and ensuring the welfare of retirees. Find management. Registration for UTME into Nigerian tertiary institutions begins January 14th to 14th. 
February 2023. Candidates must check their eligibility before commencing registration. Scanning the QR code provided by JAM for the e-brochure and e-syllabus. Each candidate must create a profile using only one phone number. Simply send your NIN by SMS to either 55019 or 66019. A profile code of 10 characters is received by the candidate to purchase the UTM to DEEP. Candidates can buy the e prints from the banks or the vending agents through their e-wallets. Registration fee, inclusive of all relevant charges, is 6,700 Naira with mock exam or 5,700 Naira without mock exam. Candidates are not to pay any other fee at the CBT center as the fee stated is consolidated. Direct entry registration costs 4,700 Naira and starts 20th February to 20th April 2023. Jam, enhancing academic excellence. <laughs> A local rescue team is still searching for the remains of some of those who lost their lives in a boat mishap at Simonaji Koko Bese local government area of Kebi State. Only four bodies have been recovered in the search. Abdul Jalil Mohamed Bawa has more. The evening of 3rd January 2023 will forever be in the memory of the people of Samanaji town in Koko Bese local government area of Kebi State. This is because misfortune befell about a hundred farmers trying to cross the Samanaji River to their various farms. An eyewitness and a member of the local rescue team narrate his experience. I saw how the incident happened and we went there to help them. But it was too late. In fact, I rescued some in my boat and my own boat. Too. So we are more than one in the boat. So a lot of people died. As at the time of filing this report, sympathizers were observed at Marlon Adamujibo's house to condole with him for losing five children in the boat mishap. The children went to the farms. And from what I was told, the boat capsized. And that was how I lost my five children. Authorities in the community says they are always sensitizing the people to the sea from overloading to avert accidents. Here in my town, 10 people died. But there are a lot of strangers who died that we don't know. So far, four dead bodies have been recovered from the river. Although the local government chairman has sent delegates to condole with the various communities involved. They are yet to get any form of rescue aid from any quarters. The boat mishap was attributed to overloading with produce and passengers. From Samanaji in Kebi State, Abdul Jalil Muhammad Ba, NTA News. The Nigeria Governors Forum says states should be allowed to generate, regulate, and distribute electricity from the state rather than the Federal Ministry of Power. This was at a public hearing on a bill to amend the Electricity Power Sector Reform Act 2005. John Yaku has details. The hearing was at the instance of the Nigeria Governors Forum, which did not have the opportunity in 2021 to make its submission. The provisions of the Constitution that make power electricity the concurrent responsibility of the federal government and the states and the concern is quite explicit we must at all times pay attention to little details the national union of electricity employee is however worried about tariff increase which it says is not good for the economy as we are meeting today sir the issue of tariff is on now if government is pumping in trillions and nigerians are being compared to pay now you can see what is happening. The sovereign is all over. When Minister of State for Power is in agreement with the people, he says he is not in position to, to consolidate on the tariff increase. In I can't speak on tariff. <laughs> it's on my neck. I'll put on that. <laughs> guys, no, 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 don't put me in a corner. However, the committee says it will look at the various submissions in line with the constitution of the land. They feel that there is a constitutional provision that gives them the right to form a, a regulatory agency, like Nigeria Regulatory Electricity Agency. So they want this in individual state. That's all what we sit today to consider. They, we, have, we, we have seen the, their concern. The first hearing of the bill was on the 14th of December 2021 in Abuja, John Yaku, NTA News.
talk politics now. The presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has assured Nigerians that he will provide the right leadership to put the nation on the path of economic prosperity and global competitiveness. Tinubu, who stated this during the party's presidential campaign rally in Edo State, also promised to bring to an end the challenges of insecurity, unemployment and power supply. Jude Abugu has the details. The arrival of the campaign train led by the former national chairman of the party, Adams Oshomole, charged up the atmosphere at the University of Maryland Stadium, where party members and supporters had gathered in their numbers to receive the party's presidential candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The overwhelmed former Labour State governor danced to his popular campaign songs. Bolatin, who urged Nigerians to elect him in February to fifth position polls, said his administration will pay special attention to agriculture, trade and economic policies, as well as youth and women empowerment. If you want prosperity, elect me. You want security, elect me. Kill. Elect Other party leaders and members of the presidential campaign council expressed confidence that Tinubu will replicate his giant strides in Lagos to every part of the country. As you want to set up, I should be able to deal with security challenges in Lagos. We are committed for that ticket. What? Are you thinking to write? There is no political party that has a candidate that is as qualified as our presidential candidate. Some party members in the state believe is an assurance that Tinubu and all the party's candidates will secure majority votes in the state during the elections. I believe you have to vote NTA News. And the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, says Nigeria will witness a total turnaround in all areas, especially in the security sector, which will in turn create an enabling environment for investors if voted into power in the February 25 presidential election. Peter Obi made the promise while addressing party faithful and supporters in Adu Ikiti, Ikiti State. Olubu Kola Aduo has details. Party presidential candidate while soliciting votes from the people of Ekiti State during the rally held at the Ekiti Palapo Pavilion at Doekiti promised to tackle the menace of insecurity, find the lasting solution to the problem of unemployment, and reposition the nation for economic growth. Instead, Ekiti State and indeed Nigeria have a lot of gains if Labour Party wins at the polls as the party is committed to wealth creation and empowerment of the youths. Labour Party leaders in the state urge the people to vote for the party on February 25 for a better Nigeria. The presidential candidate had earlier paid homage to the Ewe of Adwekiti and other major stakeholders in the state. In Adwekiti, Olubukola Aduwo, NTA News. And the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has flagged off its campaign in Funtua Senatorial District ahead of the 2023 general election. The campaign rally drew thousands of supporters from across Katsina State. Correspondent Mohamed Salisu Awal reports. Thousands of PDP supporters from the nook and crannies of Katsina State converged on Funtua Mimi Stadium to witness the PDP gubernatorial rally flag up which signifies the full commencement of the People's Democratic Party political activities in Katsina State ahead of the 2023 general elections. Critical stakeholders of the People's Democratic Party and their separate speeches emphasize on the need for party faithful to rally around and converse for support to ensure success of PDP in all categories. I'm calling to all people in Katsina State to vote PDP during the 2023 general elections. They call on party faithfuls to avoid conflict during the electoral campaign and abide by the rules and regulations governing the conduct of elections in Nigeria. There were also a series of lectures from stakeholders on the significance of tolerance among Nigerians 
and avoid divisions along party lines. The highlight of the event include presentation of PDP flags to various contestants as a symbol of confirmation of their candidature. From Futura, Mohamed Awal, and News. And ahead of the February 25 and March 11 general election, INEC has established a national situation room and coalition center. The Situation Room will be responsible for the preparation of the venue, seating arrangement, utilities and services, security, the accreditation of party agents, as well as the national and international observers and the media. A statement by INEC National Commissioner for Information, Festus Okoye, notes that INEC has designated the International Conference Center, ICC in Abuja, to serve as the venue for the collation of presidential election results. Meanwhile, the collection of PVCs takes effect at the road levels from the 6th of January 2023 and will last till January 15th when it will return to local government offices of the Commission until the 22nd of January. All validly registered voters who are yet to collect their PVCs, including those who applied for replacement, are encouraged to proceed to their wards to do so between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. daily, including Saturdays and Sundays. The statement adds that PVCs of those who applied for transfer are available for collection at the local governments and registration areas where they intend to vote. The federal government has commenced the payment of security debarment allowance to the veterans of the Nigerian Armed Forces. The Permanent Secretary, Minister of Defense, Ibrahim Abubakar Khanna, announced this at a meeting with the veterans in Abuja. 21 billion naira, representing 28% of the total outstanding security debarment allowance approved by President Buhari to the ministry as first tranche, is in fulfillment of the promise made by the government in September 2022. The Ministry of Defense, in collaboration with the Ministry of Finance through the Military Pensions Board, initiated the commencement of payment of the allowances. Let's now join Hingino in Lagos for more reports on Network News. Hingino. Thank you, Cyril. The race to meet up with the March 2023 delivery date for Lagos about an expressway is on again as contractors working on the highway are now back on site after the Yuletide break. Adeni Itayo, who is monitoring the corridor, reports that gridlock is gradually creeping back, much to the displeasure of road users. While the Yorita break lasted, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway was a delight to drive on as the federal government, keen on making holiday travels as smooth as possible for road users, directed contractors working on the project to suspend work and remove diversions on the highway. After about three weeks respite for motorists flying Lagos Ibadan Expressway for the Yorita holiday, the barriers are back and the road narrower because construction work has resumed as it is characteristic of every effort to develop this one is also taking its toll on road users we thought it would be like 10 minutes drive but fortunately it's about two hours we can do it uh, next week the, the people will come for you know village will travel now uh, this uh, the road up is too much now at least it is uh, it's on the 15th they want to build this road again it's too early now Air proving equipment are back, working on two major points on the corridor. This one around OPIC and another one around Luton towards the Long Bridge, outbound Lagos. Federal Controller of Works Lagos, Omar Bakari, who was on site to supervise the project, said the ministry is working with the contractor to ensure that the experience of road users is less harrowing. Both two sections will be completed and the way from uh, the Long Bridge and the Tower Bridge will be um, right to the area. We still have some major works, and further works to carry out between Pedra and the Tower Bridge. We have to be very early in the year because we want to catch him on the 
on the uh, dry season that we have now before the rain starts setting in. The road is expected to be busier as more people return from Eurotide holidays from Lagos about the expressway. I don't know the safety of lives and property as well as traffic management remains priority of the government. Adeola Komiakere takes a look at measures that contributed to the successes recorded during the festive period to curtail excesses associated with the season in Lagos. The apprehension from the general public that crime rates usually increase during festive period is one of the reasons that security agencies are always on red alert to secure the lives and property of the citizenry. Apart from pockets of crimes and arrests by the police, Lagos residents give passmark to security agencies for being proactive in ensuring safety of lives and property in the state. Anybody? Come around to arrest or anybody come around to do anything for so we have to commend the Lagos State Government and the security outfit agencies. We have tried our best so far. I want to assure that the safety of the state is our top priority. We are working assiduously to ensure that Lagos is safe and secure. On roads, the sector commander Federal Road Safety Corps says road crashes during the period under review was minimal. We were fully prepared and coupled with the luck we had by virtue of the removal of uh, barriers along the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, it made the, the traffic management to be quite easy from 15 to 27th of uh, December. We recorded a total of about 33 crashes. He, however, urged motorists to adhere to traffic rules and regulations, adding that there will be continuous enforcement on installation of speed limit device. It is the expectation of residents that Lagos Metropolis will continue to witness free vehicular movement and safer environment for the well-being of all. In Lagos, Adeola Konyakiri, NTA News. That's it from this end. Time now for a break. The news will be back shortly. Our country people, they talk with one voice, then say, Now, nah, she want the Bola Tinubu, then want as president of Nigeria for this president election. As she want the Bola Tinubu, that the man who we all know and see all the good work in the do for the country, especially when in the governor of Lagos State. Now, when God the youth turn Lagos to the best state for Nigeria, today, many people all over Nigeria they like to go Lagos, go settle down for business and better life. And because of the good work when Bola Tinubu do, people of Nigeria, as she want to do for Lagos, now so he ready to go for the whole country. What has she want to Bola Tinubu for president of Nigeria? What can she shed him as vice president? What NPC, the party will get a broom. Hey guys, today I'll be talking about something really interesting. I'll be giving you tips on how to survive in the Sapa economy. <laughs> Hey guys, so I'm back. Guess what? If you run out of airtime or data, dial the triple seven hash on your blue line to borrow and pay back later. Even <laughs> today, I'm gonna have a few sticks. Influenza. It is a contagious respiratory illness caused by influenza virus. Some of the symptoms include fever, headache, muscle or body aches, sore throat and a runny nose. In some cases, it can lead to death. The influenza virus is easily transmitted in crowded places such as schools and nursing homes. All age groups can be affected. However, pregnant women, children 6 months to the age of 5 years, the elderly, individuals with chronic medical conditions and health workers are at higher risk. The best way to prevent the flu is by getting a flu vaccine every year. Get your children vaccinated against influenza every year. Ask your healthcare professional for influenza vaccination in a clinic, hospital or pharmacy. My people, I'm not a maker. Make us farmers. Let me get all this. Okay. I don't learn my lesson. Somebody come buy motor for my hand. Carry big, big money. Come give me. 
my wind be be bust, then my eye open. And you will see that for one night in here. My wind here to see Babam. And it's all about me too. And he make me, they warn you. All of them, I want to do business like me. When they carry big, big money, when I go, sometimes I go carry transfer, carry bring back. Look at my shine in my eye. Because the <laughs> special control unit are those money lenders. When they call school, they don't want to say, if the money pass 5 million naira for individual, no collect them. If you pass 10 million naira for company, no collect them. Can I go here? Bank. If you not do one like that, 250,000 naira for every day where this offense happen. <laughs> or they will suspend your license. Or they will go to the for your hand. You talk say, I know what you are. This message is from the Economic and Financial Times Commission, EFC. See, it depends you. It depends us. It depends everybody. Yes. But what? Not share. Scatter. Go not. A no go suffer. Eh? This one they talk and make them go, make them go if they won't go. This one they talk, we go come out, we go go. This one say, uh -huh. make we scatter, make we burn, make we do everything. When you scatter, finish, where you go? Uh -huh. Okay, you go take private jet, carry your family, go. Uh, but make I ask you, what about your uncle, mama, auntie, brother, sister? What about them? Remember, you throw stone for market. <laughs> you don't know whether the stone go touch your own person. If the thing will go come out from your mouth, you no go fit gather us together as one people. Shut up. Wait, please. War, no get friend. You know no language, you know no anything. So if I will be there too much, make we sit down at the table of time. Nigeria na my own. Nigeria na your own. Nigeria na our own. Make we come together and keep them together. It's time to talk business. The Nigerian Export Promotion Council NEPC says the implementation of a 50 billion naira export expansion facility program as part of the economic sustainability plan is beginning to yield results as the country is already recording gains in exports volume. Uh, from joint to um, over 200 products that were exported to different uh, countries, different destinations. Uh, that's French because uh, some products that we thought would never make it to the international market are now uh, uh, being sold internationally and are being accepted. And so I think it's a good achievement for us. And thanks to the Buhari administration who has given us the enablement, the resources to do what we are doing as a agency. And the bulls could not maintain control of stocks traded at the exchange today as a total of 138.7 shares in 3,673 deals corresponding to a market value of 1.828 billion naira were traded. Compared with previous trading day Wednesday, January 4th, today's data shows 48% decline in volume, 86% decline in turnover, and 12% decline in deals. The current market capitalization is 27.7 trillion naira. Stalin Bank recorded the highest volume of 29.2 million traded shares, followed by Guarantee Trust holding 19.9 million and Access Holdings 11.3 million. And still talking business with cash withdrawals exceeding the threshold, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit has directed financial institutions to hold cash withdrawals from federal, state, and local government accounts from March 1st, 2023. The director and CEO of the unit, Modi Bohaman Tukur, said the ban is necessary to check the rate at which monies are being withdrawn from public accounts with disregard to money laundering prohibition act ali Utoko reports by available fact with the nigerian financial intelligence unit more than one trillion naira was withdrawn by the three tiers of government between 2015 and 2022 a situation the agency describes as alarming in compliance with the guidelines of financial institutions cash transactions towards a cashless economy the nfiu takes action what we advise in the guidelines is that they should make a recourse to technology and then also as does as the law requested 
and they should also make request to training. Um, there is also a need for the new currency provision to adjust to the market operation. And the way it will adjust is to go by the withdrawal limits imposed by the central bank. From 1st of March 2023, cash withdrawal is expected to go down by about 1 trillion naira out of the 3 trillion naira in circulation when all tiers of government put facilities in place to fully operationalize the cash withdrawal guidelines. The director of the unit says it is only the president that is in the position to grant waivers in special cases where there is need to withdraw cash. Otherwise, any cash withdrawal from public accounts will trigger money laundering and corruption investigations. Ali Utukur, NTA News. And that is Business Network News continues. It's nice doing business with you. Thank you, Benny. Nice doing business with you, too. The federal government, in a bid to address the challenges of unemployment, has laid the foundation for training and skills acquisition center in Baguru local government area of Kebi State. Correspondent Usman Abdullahi Shehu reports that the project will energize economic and industrial development. The center emerged as a child of necessity to complement President Muhammad Buhari's drive to reduce unemployment and poverty among youths in the country. Naseni Center in Bagudo is expected to train and empower youths on different contemporary technical skills. The center will be a relief to the community and the people of the state as it will engage and empower the teeming youth in the local government, state and the country at large. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudo appreciated President Muhammad Buhari's choice of Kebis to cite the center. In this center will enable us to have more skills in the local economies and even to support other countries. So I believe this center, among other centers, will continue to boost the prosperity of our state. The Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malemi SAN, who gracefully provided the land for the center, pointed out that Naseni will be gold oriented. The Executive Vice Chairman, National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, Professor Muhammad Sani Haduna, gave a vivid explanation of the structural plan of the center and how it will operate. The contractors have been given eight weeks each to deliver his own aspect of the job. It is our anticipation that in the second week of March, God willing, will commission the first phase of this project to start our operation. Highlight of the event was presentation of 350 wonder pots, a technically advanced cooking stove for community women. Swan Abdullah Shehu, NTA News. Now, one of NTA's finest broadcasters, a writer and teacher, Eugenia Abu, is 60. And she's not losing touch with what she's known for. Charles Alpha was at her Diamond Jubilee celebration and now reports. Amazing grace, how sweet are memories of eventful moments over the past decades. As families, friends and loved ones describe the celebrant Eugenia Abu as a shining example to the younger generation. You've had so many adventures in your life, touching lives positively. And this is just the beginning of the rest of an eventful and worthy life. We need a nation where wise men and women are at the stations of decision making and the arena of action. Eugenia, I'm sure, will lend her powerful voice to this cause. On the day she turned 60, she chose friends of eloquence in the wisdom conversation, dissected wisdom and managing fame among upcoming broadcasters to celebrate with her. She may be on the sixth floor. Eugenia Abu isn't losing touch with all the things she knows how to do best. You can't worship enough. Um, because everything I have is to the glory of God. And I'm thankful. Um, not everybody has the life that I have. It's not that I haven't had challenges. Or I haven't had um, moments where it has been downhill. But I think when you hold on to God and you have the support of family, everything then works well for good. Very resourceful working with her, and um, exciting moments, and um, you know, full of energy. My mom is an icon, she's amazing, she's a beautiful woman. She is not just a seasoned broadcaster, but a writer, an author, mentoring young people on the shores of Africa and beyond. 
Charles, Alpha, and T News. Big welcome to the sixth floor. Time for another. You say that now, but then when you see your mother, you start to act like you're dead but dumb. You were supposed to be more careful! I think! Really not enough! Why? The family of Gahatu announces the passing on to Gary and the joyous celebration of life of our dear beloved wife, mother, sister, grandmother, and great grandmother, great mama, Mary Elizabeth Gahatu, who slept in the world on the 1st of January 2023 at the age of 70 years. Funeral arrangements is as follows. Thursday, 6th January 2023, service of songs at Echo Gospel 3, English, Apata, Jaws, by 4 p.m. Friday, 7th January 2023, Corpse Leaves F. Military base module by 7 30 a.m. Funeral service starts by 9 a.m. at Echo Gospel 2 Church, English, and a big Jobs Plant State. Interment with family residents, number JG14, Apatha Street, beside Learning Field International School, Jobs Plant State. Announcer, the family. Nigeria, African beauty on the Gulf of Guinea, blessed with natural landmarks and wildlife reserves. Nigeria, largest economy in Africa. Nigeria, famous accomplishment in entertainment and sports. Nigeria, resorts the globally respected human capital. Our uniqueness lies in our tenacity, our acumen, a testament of success. At NTA, we are forever proud to be the showcase channel of this positive energy and the reflection of the good in our nation. The capacity to tell our nation's story would not have been possible without the support and patronage of the three hands of government, ministries, departments, agencies, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, and of course you, our esteemed viewers. As we wish you a prosperous new year, let's get set to make 2023 even greater together. Now for a bit on sports. The 20 participating clubs in the 2022-2023 season of the Nigeria Professional Football League have been handed 10 million Naira grants each ahead of March Day 1 fixture on January 8. The grant was presented by Nigeria Football Federation President Ibrahim Gusso and Chairman Interim Management Committee of the League, Benga Elegeleye, to club owners in Abuja with the aim of reducing the financial burden on football clubs in the country as efforts are geared towards achieving zero dependence on state government cash flows. We are talking with people that are going to bring money into the league and they want us to make sure that at least we take back our league the way it is being run in other parts of the world. Therefore, we must take certain actions before we can get there. The issue there is we must start next season by August. There's no going back about it. We are here in fulfilling of that uh, to let our happen today so that this can be easy for the clubs to start the league without much uh, stress. The new season, which runs on a bridge format of two groups of 10 each, ends in July. In the meantime, the Nigeria Professional Football League has inaugurated the referee's appointment and match commissioner committees in Abuja. Faith Irabo leads the referee's appointments committee and Babagana Kali is in charge of the match commissioner committee with a tenure of two years to serve. Still on football, the FA Cup is back in action on Friday with Manchester United hoping to extend their recent winning streak when they entertain Everton in the third round at Old Trafford. The Red Devils are coming out for 3-0 Premier League win over Bournemouth on Tuesday, while Everton were defeated four goals to one by Brighton and Over Albion on the same day. In tennis, Novak Djokovic defeated Quirtin House 7-6-7-6 in the round of 16 clash at the Adelaide International. The win sets up a thrilling quarterfinal encounter with 18th-ranked Canadian Denis Shapovalov, who earlier overcame Roman Safal in 6-4-6-3. With sports updates, Ayodeji, Mike in the NTA News. 
President Muhammad Buhari condoles with the family, friends, associates, the academia and media about the passing of revered Professor of Political Science Ayo Lukoto, whose works testify to his loyalty, patriotism and charity. President Buhari believes the scholars' investment of ideas in nation building, teaching students and counseling of leaders should be preserved for posterity, while his dispatcher will be greatly missed especially now that the nation is approaching general election, where his views had remained salient for many years. President Buhari prays that the Almighty God will receive the soul of the departed and comfort his family. And the death has occurred of Wing Commander Anjuma Karau retired. He was 62. A funeral service will hold on Saturday, January 7, at Ekwa Jankasa Zangu Kataf Kaduna, by 10 a.m. And that concludes Network News tonight. We thank you for watching. Remember, stand with the NTA against rape and rapists. I'm Cyril Stoba. Good night. <laughs>